Hi, I am Ameya Prabhu, a final year master student from Triple IIT Hyderabad, India. I am presenting our work, Deep Expander Networks, Efficient Deep Networks from Graph Theory, done with Dr. Girish Verma and Anup Nambodiri. Over the years, researchers have sought to create efficient deep networks. Initial attempts like ResNet achieved this by improving connectivity. Recent networks like MobileNet try to compress the networks even at the slight cost in accuracy. If we look at the approaches to improve network efficiency, they often take one of the two directions. Network design techniques construct or learn overall network architectures. They use principles such as increasing connectivity or multi-scale processing to do so. Layer modification techniques, on the other hand, propose generic transformations to existing layers. This transformation is aimed to make them more compact or efficient. Given our architecture, layer modification techniques such as pruning allows us to significantly compress it with minimal impact on accuracy. Now let us take a closer look at the process of pruning. Traditionally, you would follow a, a train followed by a prune strategy. That is, you train the full network and then prune. Notice that this restricts us to networks where the corresponding fully connected model can be loaded on the GPU. That is, deeper and wider networks may not fit. Once you prune, you typically retrain and repeat the same process multiple times. After the whole process, we get a compressed architecture. However, this architecture is not a good compressed architecture in the sense that we cannot take this and then use it for other problems, like we do say for ResNet. We have to prune again from scratch for a new problem. To solve these, we ask the question, what if we prune before training? Think about it. That would mean that we skip all the intermediate steps and directly train the compact network. This allows us to train wider and deeper networks. In addition, the resulting architecture is generic and may be used for multiple problems. The question we now have is this. How do we prune without training, without the use of data? So given a fully connected graph, we need to sparsify the connections, that is, go from A to B. Notice that regular pruning strategies results in a partially connected graph, such as the one in B. If you notice the connections there, some connectivity is lost between some input and output pairs, and it will never get connected again, no matter how long you retrain. In our setting, hence, we need to ensure that connectivity is high across multiple layers, and all of this needs to be done before even we look at the data. Our key insight is that if we maintain a high degree of overall connectivity during sparsification, training algorithms will have the ability to learn a wide variety of functions. To achieve this, we borrow ideas from graph theory, specifically the idea of expandent graphs. What are expander graphs? They are a well-known set of graphs whose existence was first proved by Mark Pinsker in 1973. People in combinatorics understand expander graphs as a highly connected graph with a large min cut between any group of input and output nodes. If you talk in probabilistic terms, if you start a short random walk from any node on an expander graph, you are equally likely to reach all nodes. In a spectral sense, the first positive eigenvalue uh, of an expander graph is large. The key property that that, that is in the core of all of this is that expander graphs are sparse but highly connected. Now, we will look at a way to construct a network using these expander graphs. Several constructive function definitions exist in graph theory literature that take this set of nodes as input and give connections as outputs between them. We use a random expander construction. We apply it on a bipartite graph, which is the structure of a single layer of a network. So we start by picking a single node. We connect it to D random edges of the next layer. The same process is repeated for uh, other input nodes. And for a multi-layer network, each layer is independently constructed in the same manner. Let us now look at the two interesting properties of an expander network that we just made. The first result ensures that if we take a node in the layer, it is sensitive to changes in the layers before it. More formally, if there are n nodes in S, then if you change anything in any single node there, then every node in T will, uh, will have an influence on it. And for any T, 
which is uh, order log login based D steps away on more. In fact, we can make an even stronger claim. Not only is the connectivity maintained, there's a very rich connectivity established. That means that not only the subsets of nodes S influence T, they do so strongly. That is, there are several paths from S to T in the, in the connectivity graph. From the point of view of the what function is learned by a network, theorem one implies that the potential range of functions learned by nodes in T covers the entire set S. And theorem two says that the function in T will have multiple terms corresponding to every node in S. Uh, all this while, we were drawing the connectivity graphs like a multi-layer perceptron. How does it work for a convolutional network? Given a connectivity graph as the one on the bottom right, a corresponding convolutional layer can be also made, which would look something like this. For a two-layer convolutional network, each channel is represented by a node in the connectivity graph, and the edge in the graph is present between two nodes if the filter corresponding to the output node operates on the input channel. So for here, input node one is connected to F1 because the first filter operates in channel one. Similarly, it is connected to F2 because the second filter also operates in channel one, and so on. In a regular convolutional layer, all input channels contribute to all output channels, and hence, the connectivity graph that we obtain on the bottom right is a fully connected one. How does it work for a sparse network? For a sparse network, not all input nodes are connected to output nodes. For example, look at the nodes in green and red. Each node is connected to a subset of nodes in, this, in the next layer. Hence, for this, the corresponding conversion operation would first select a subset of input channels for every filter and then convolve them to get the output filter. Note that the input filters need not be disjoint. The same channel may be both red and green. To put it all together, let us compare expander convolutions with full convolutions. We observe that the filters are more compressed. This requires less space when we load the network. The filters also have fewer computational requirements. And all of this is achieved while maintaining a high degree of overall connectivity. In terms of implementing XNets, there are already libraries which allow you to do so by having convolutions in an efficient manner. Open source libraries such as Blockspace convolutions is one of them. To see how effective this formulation is, we present three set of experimental comparisons. The first set is with other connectivity graphs popularly used. Example is group convolutions. The second set is a comparison with pruning techniques traditionally used. And the last is to see whether we can achieve a better parameter accuracy trade-off if uh, we use efficient architectures like ResNet or DenseNet. We compare our connectivity graph with the popularly used group convolutions. So we train a mobile net 0.5 on ImageNet and replace the one cross one convolutions with grouped and expanders, and we compare the both. We see that our results are consistently better by four to five percent on ImageNet. Next, we compare with pruning techniques. The results on the left compress VG16 with expander networks and other pruning techniques on C410. Our method achieves similar or better results compared to other competing methods. However, if you notice in the case of AlexNet, we are able to compress the network with a slight increase in the error rate, but we are unable to match state of the art. This is primarily because expanders need many layers to achieve full connectivity, and AlexNet has only three fully connected layers that they compress. Hence, do not use expanders for locally compressing one or two layers. We, reserve, we revisit the advantages of our approach against pruning. We saw that there were three primary advantages. We can train a single compact network, the resultant architecture is transferable to other data sets, and the compactness of training a network allows us to train wider and deeper networks in the same memory budget as the original one. The first two are properties of our approach, but we need experimental evidence for the third one. So we see that if we say take dense net on, on C410 and we start with a network and then we make it wider on the left and deeper on the right, then we can compare the parameter accuracy trade-offs and we notice that 
we achieve the same error with far fewer parameters by going wider, deep, and then compress those networks. Hence, it is, it is a good alternative to, to first go wider or deeper and then compress it and get a better network than the original one. We also can notice that expander networks are stable even at compression rates of 30 to 50 times. That is, only 1 in 30 connections or 1 in 50 connections are preserved. The next experiment is on efficient architectures. We take ResNet and we compress it. We notice that X ResNet achieves significant reduction in computational cost over a minor increase in the error rate. Another way to look at the result may be the one can achieve a reduction in both flops and error rate by using expander graphs on a deeper network. Similar results can be observed with dense nets on the C510 dataset. In summary, Xnets provide a prune train method to compress deep networks. We train networks in one cycle and can now handle wider and deeper networks. We achieve good error flop trade offs. And the takeaway from this talk would be that global connectivity analysis is important and can lead to e effective architecture design. Our PyTorch code is available at the GitHub repository mentioned below. To use it, all you need to do is to convert your convolutional and linear layers to the corresponding expander layers. For more information, please visit us at our poster. Thank you. Any questions? So, I have a question right here on the right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, do you have a sense of what degree D you have to choose to get the performance that you were showing? Okay, yeah, uh, we use degree D uh, of two, which is we compress them by 50% or, or, or by 75%. So the resultant network will either have the 50% of the original uh, parameters or the 25% of the original parameters, de depending on how we compress. But we typically deal in this range. But that, that is very network specific. If we have very wide networks, then we can go up to 30x, 50x, and it's still stable. Okay, one more questions we can have. Okay, I have one. So, do you actually uh, check the long time of your algorithm? Uh, yeah, can, can, can F number is quite good, but the actual learning time and the GPU uh, yeah, CUDN is very optimized. Yes. So in that sense, it, it, it will require some time for the libraries to, you know, uh, get, get get it fast enough. But uh, that would be a, a that once impl better implementations come, I think that would be possible. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks again for for the uh, presenter. Yeah.